So for this next video, we're going to be speaking about basic atomic structure. So first of all, let's talk about subatomic particles. Atoms, which are the basic building blocks of matter, are made up of three distinct particles. Protons, neutrons, and electrons. So usually in some textbooks, you're going to find this convention. Protons are usually drawn in red shades. Electrons are usually small, gray, yellow. They're, they're much smaller, so that's why we're not going to color them. And then we have neutrons, which are usually colored in blue. So in this case, what we have to understand is relative size. Neutrons and protons are about the same size. And electrons are much, much smaller. So we have to think about protons, which have a positive charge. Protons. Neutrons don't have a charge, they're neutral. And last but not least, electrons have a negative charge and they are much smaller. And if we draw a basic atomic structure, here we have a nucleus, here we have another nucleus, and here we have a third nucleus. Okay? Around it, I'm going to draw a little thinner line maybe to represent the electron cloud and we're gonna draw a little dot to represent the electron right so protons are present in an atom and protons are what gives each atom each element its identity in this case I'm gonna color one of these spheres in red to represent the protons and I'm going to color the other spheres in blue to represent the neutrons so that I can do an introduction to another little topic. So here we have a nucleus and the nucleus is in the center and it composes most of the mass of the atom. Nucleus, plural nuclei, and then the region around the atom is the electron cloud. and the electron cloud is a theoretical region floating around the nucleus orbiting the nucleus and having attractive magnetic pull, pull and push with the electrons and the protons which have the same charge but it's opposite positive and negative now here we have another concept in these atoms that I'm drawing I have one electron I have one proton in this one the second one I have one electron, one proton, one neutron. And in this last one, I have one electron, one proton, and two neutrons, okay? Now, how does this uh, pan out in terms of, of the identity of these atoms? The subatomic particle that gives an element its identity is protons. So in this case, since all of these have one proton, one proton means that this element is hydrogen. So here we're talking about hydrogen in its different forms. And we're going to introduce the concept of atomic number. Atomic number is also the number of protons found in the nucleus. And atomic number is what gives each element its identity. So if we have more protons, it's going to be a different element. So in this case, these three atoms are indeed hydrogen. Okay, so the atomic number is 1, 1, 1, and this means that they are all hydrogen. But we also have another concept, which is mass number. And mass number is the addition of protons and neutrons. So this gives us mass number. So mass number, if you find it in textbook, it's usually represented by letter capital A. And number of protons, or atomic number, is usually characterized by the letter Z, or Z, which is atomic number. So in this case, if mass number, letter A, is the addition of protons and neutrons, the mass number for this first illustration is 1. The mass number for the second illustration, one proton, one neutron, is two. 
and the mass number for the last drawing is 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. Okay? So in general terms, this is the basic structure of an atom, and we can also introduce another concept, which is, if these three are hydrogen, what makes them different? Their mass number, otherwise their amount of neutrons, okay? So what does this mean? The word that we're going to introduce here is isotopes. Isotopes are atoms of the same element, but that have a varying number of neutrons, or in other words, a different mass number. So isotopes, one of the requirements is that they have to have the same atomic number, that means the same number of protons in their nucleus, and they have to have a different mass number, or that means that they have a different amount of neutrons in their nucleus. No neutrons, one neutron, two neutrons. Now, let's talk about another feature. When we're talking about atoms, there's another concept that's important to understand. As we just saw right now, atomic number, which is represented by letter Z, is equal to the number of protons, right? So, if I have atomic number 10, the amount of protons I'm going to have automatically is 10. And this gives me a specific identity. On the periodic table, the only element that has 10 protons is neon, represented by chemical symbol Ne. If I have 12, that means I have 12 protons, atomic number 12. I have magnesium, which is represented by chemical symbol Mg. Another example, if I have 6 as an atomic number, I have 6 protons and I'm um, carbon, represented by chemical symbol letter C. So, in these terms, when we're speaking about neutral atoms, that means atoms that don't have a charge, the number of protons is going to be equal to the number of electrons. So, if I have an atom with an atomic number of 8, that means I'm going to have 8 protons and I'm going to have 8 electrons. That's for neutral atoms. But then we have another concept which is called ions. Ions are atoms that have a charge. And this charge can be positive or negative. But if we have a number of protons that is greater than the number of electrons, this means we have a positive charge, and we're speaking about cations, which is the word used to describe an ion that has a positive charge. On the other hand, if we have a number of protons that is less than the number of electrons, we have a, positive, a negative charge. So let me write here positive charge. We have anions, and anions have negative charges. So again, neutral atoms have no charge, protons and electrons are the same, or atomic number, protons and electrons are the same. However, when we have ions, the number of electrons and protons is different. So more protons, positive charge, cations. More electrons, anions, negative charge. And how does this work out? Let's go to another example. Let's say we have the element fluorine. And fluorine, we can get it from the periodic table, has an atomic number 9. Invariably, fluorine, in order to be fluorine, is going to have 9 protons. And if it's in its neutral form, that means it doesn't have a charge, it's going to have also 9 electrons. But what happens if we have a disparity in, in fluorine's amount of protons and neutrons? Again, the amount of protons is always going to be 9, otherwise we would not be speaking about fluorine. But the amount of electrons can indeed vary depending on certain bonding or chemical conditions that are going to make it interact with other elements. So in this case, let's say that we have 10 electrons instead of the normal 9. How is this going to affect fluorine? So its atomic number is going to remain the same, but what's going to change is its charge. 
So fluorine is going to be more negative right now. So how do we express that? By writing a negative one on the upper corner. And this means that fluorine is an ion. It's not a neutral atom anymore. It has a charge now, a negative charge, because it has more electrons. So fluorine is going to have a negative one charge. What happens when it's the opposite? Let's say that it has eight electrons. This means that overall it's more positive, right? So what's going to change? The charge is going to change because now fluorine is more positive than negative. By how much? By one. So now fluorine is going to be positive one. Let's do the reverse exercise and write fluorine minus two. In order for it to be fluorine, our atomic number does not change. But now what we have to calculate is how many electrons do we have? If we're more negative by two units and this number is not going to change, this means automatically that this fluorine atom is going to have 11 electrons in order to be negative by two units. Okay? And let's do the final example, fluorine plus two. In order to be fluorine, we still have to keep that nine as an atomic number in the norm of protons. And the number of electrons is what we're going to analyze. Now fluorine is positive by 2. If this number doesn't change, this means that there are two more protons than electrons. So in this case, the amount of electrons in this fluorine atom is going to be 7. Now, when we classify these atoms, what's going to happen? This is a neutral atom because the number of protons is the same. Now, here, the number of electrons is bigger. So it's negative. Negative means it's an anion. And then here we analyze the number of protons is bigger. So this is a cation, which is positive charge. We analyze this, and again, number of protons is smaller. It's more negative, negative 2. This is also an anion. And last but not least, positive 2, 9 protons, more than 7 electrons. So this is also a cation.